Going to the moon with the Gemini spacecraft is something people actually briefly considered, and it's what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. It might sound a little bit nutty to take a spacecraft the size of the front seat of a car all the way to the moon, but it was something McDonnell Aircraft was actually looking at in the early 1960s. The idea was to see how far the Gemini spacecraft could actually go, not just in distance, but in terms of using the technology to achieve goals. And one thing McDonnell engineers figured out was they could actually go to the moon with the Gemini spacecraft. The basic idea of the flight was to launch a two-man Gemini spacecraft on a C-5 rocket, the one that we now know as the Saturn V, all the way from the Earth to the Moon on a direct ascent profile. The core of the vehicle would have been the Gemini spacecraft, but it would have had a lot of additions on either side to make it lunar landing ready. Behind the Gemini spacecraft, where the adapter section eventually went, would have been a service module designed to hold all the environmental control, electrical communications, and navigation equipment. At the wide end of this service module, so moving away from the crew module, would have been a terminal landing module. This would have held everything the crew would have needed to land on the moon, including propellant and landing gear to give 44 inches of clearance from any potentially large rocks. Attached to the end of this landing module, even further from the crew module, would have been a retrograde module. This would have held all the fuel and the rocket engine for the translunar burn, any mid-course corrections, the lunar orbit insertion burn, and the retrograde burn for actual landing. So you can kind of see the similarities with Apollo. Every module of the spacecraft would have been jettisoned once it was no longer needed. The retrograde module was designed to be released 6,000 feet above the lunar surface, where it wouldn't be needed anymore. A separate lunar ascent stage would have started the Gemini's trip all the way back home. Once the mission was ready to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, the crew would jettison the service module. So the Gemini spacecraft, that core vehicle, would have been the only piece to return to the Earth. There were different configurations for the actual Gemini spacecraft in this proposal as well. Because all the additional stages were added behind the crew module, so its nose would have been pointing up, that would mean that the crew would be lying on their backs relative to the lunar surface. To give them a way to see the moon, a lot of these configurations added mirrors outside the spacecraft so the astronauts could look at the reflection in the mirror. Some other versions added bubble canopies so the crew could actually lie on their stomachs and look through these bubble windows out onto the moon's surface. One version had the crew actually depressurize the spacecraft in lunar orbit and then cover the hatch with a bubble canopy or a giant window so that they would have a way to look out the spacecraft while landing on the moon. The idea of going to the moon with Gemini actually got as far as Congress, but it was shut down by NASA Administrator Jim Webb. He said that if NASA was going to get any more money for a lunar program, it would have to go to Apollo. Retrofitting an Earth orbital spacecraft to go to the moon was just a waste of money. For more on the Lunar Gemini missions, including the details on each configuration, Lunar Gemini 1, 2, and 3, be sure to check out the links posted below. And let me know, what do you think would have happened if we'd actually decided to go to the moon with Gemini? What would the alternative history look like? This is kind of a fun one. As always, leave your questions, comments, and ideas for future episodes in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space updates, and with new episodes going up every single Tuesday and Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.